Thank you for purchasing a Hanover lift system. This video will show a step-by-step -step installation of this durable overhead door lift mechanism in a standard application. Begin the installation by measuring the opening, its height, width, headroom, and side room. Make sure your backing is in the correct location and that there is sufficient room for the tracks. Measure the length of the door sections. Ensure the door sections fit the opening properly. To assemble each section, lay two individual panels across two sawhorses with the exterior side down. Place protective material between the door face and the sawhorses. Clamp the two individual panels together firmly and pull a bead of sealant along the end edge of the section. Then slide the metal end cap with a wide side to the inside of the door onto the end of the panel and screw it down as illustrated. Assemble all sections in the same manner. For the bottom panel of the door only, remove the narrow black seal from the lower edge of the panel section before installing the aluminum retainer to that edge. Then slide the weather strip into the retainer channels. Now attach the cable brackets to the bottom section as shown. Assemble the roller brackets to the lift brackets. Before inserting the rollers, lubricate with supplied lubricant. Avoid heavy grease. Identify, position, and fasten number 4 hinges to the top of the bottom section through the pre-punched end caps. Note the identifying number is stamped on the appropriate hinge. Now insert the rollers. Repeat the above for each of the panels, except the top panel. Panels will be identified as follows. Bottom section, first intermediate section, second from the bottom, second intermediate section, third from the bottom, and so on. The top panel will be referred to simply as the top section. Attach the end hinges as follows. Number 4 hinge to the top of the bottom section. Number 6 to the top of the second. Number 8 to the top of the third. Top roller bracket to the top of the top panel. Keep in mind that if you have been supplied with trusses, that these should also be attached while the panels are on the sawhorses. Trusses should be applied according to a separate schedule. Assemble the top roller bracket to the adjustable roller sleeve as shown. Do not torque the bolts at this time, as they will need to be adjusted at a later stage. If your door has been supplied with Z trusses, you will need to check the truss schedule for the location of each truss. If using trusses, note the procedure illustrated here. At this point, all the face hardware required for setting the panels in place must be attached to the panels. Now begin the installation of the track assembly. The adjustable continuous angle should measure 8 inches less than the height of the header. The vertical track should measure 6 inches less than the height of the header. Identify the vertical track and attach the adjustable continuous angle, leaving it loosely assembled for now. Do not attach the assembly to the wall at this point. The bottom section can be in place before attaching the track assembly. Note, if being mounted to steel jams, the track assembly angle can be inverted and the door should overlap half or one inch either side depending on track angle type used. Lift the second section into place on top of the bottom section. Make sure that all the rollers are inserted. Pin the panel to the jam using nails or a clamping device that can be easily removed after the vertical tracks are fastened into place. Set the panel section in the center of the opening. Shim the panel to ensure that it is level. Extend the shims under the track so that the track and door are both on the shim. Attach the adjustable continuous angle and track assembly loosely to its proper location on the backing. To get the adjustable continuous angle and track assembly into its proper location, manipulate the track over the rollers. Having done that, the adjustable angle can now be fastened through the backing into the jam. Precise adjustments can be made when all the panels are in place. 
Stack in place the rest of the sections in the proper order. A block and tackle or other lifting device will be required to lift the remaining sections. This can be done by securing a block and tackle two or more feet above each track. Where headroom is not available, you may be forced to do this with less room. In this case, attach your lifting device as close to the ceiling as possible. Note, the roller hinges are suitable points for lifting the panels. Connect panels by attaching the hinges and intermediate hinges, ensuring that the panels are stacked evenly and snugly to each other. The panels must be level and even at the ends. At this point, adjust the vertical tracks. At the top of the vertical track, the point where it meets the horizontal track, that is 6 inches below the header. Adjust and tighten the vertical tracks, leaving appropriate spacing between track and jams. Do final adjustments before raising the door. The door should be just slightly loose from the jam. Where the vertical track meets the floor, the track will be 1.5 to 3 inches from the back, depending on panel thickness. These two measurements are important as it will prevent the door from rubbing against the jam. Now install the head plates by securing them to the vertical track through the slotted holes using 5 16th by 3 quarter inch carriage bolts. Then lag them to the backing through the pre-drilled holes in the head plate. Make sure the head plates are vertically level. Use a level to check. Note. The short head plate is used to attach the horizontal track and mount the double pulley on the side of the weights. The longer head plate is used on the other side to attach the track and mount the single pulley. Great care should be taken to ensure that the two vertical track assemblies and head plates are located horizontally in line with each other and vertically parallel with each other. Failure to have the head plates correctly in line with each other horizontally and vertically could cause the door to operate poorly during the operating cycles. Proceed with the installation of the horizontal tracks. Position the right-hand horizontal track on the right-hand head plate as shown. Fasten the track to the head plate loosely with only four bolts at this point. Horizontal tracks can be level to one quarter inch per foot of rise. More than that is not recommended. Next, determine how to attach the end of the horizontal track that is temporarily suspended to the ceiling joist or rafter. Prepare a hanger that is a horizontal track support and suspend the horizontal track with it at a predetermined location. This location should have the tracks in approximately equal distance apart and square to the wall. The back hanger should be 12 to 18 inches from the end of the track and the second hanger, about halfway between the end hanger and the jam. Wider and or higher doors may require more hangers. The track can be level if the door is to be manually operated. If operated by chain hoist or electric operator, then the track should rise by one quarter inch per foot of track, from the end of the track to the door if possible. That is, an eight foot track would have a two inch rise. The track must be secured, but able to swing at this point. Note, any temporary supports must be removed and track brackets securely fastened before operating the door. Now install the drive pulley. Mount the drive pulley as shown. The drive pulley is mounted on top of the horizontal track bracket, which is level with a bolt and nut, at a location that brings the pulley assembly tight against the wall. The pulley assembly is then lagged to the backing. The next step is the installation of the weight counterbalance system. To install the tower and empty weight boxes, lift the tower with the chain connected weight boxes into position beside the door opening. This is the side with the double pulley and extra tower backing. If the tower and empty weight boxes are too heavy, use a block and tackle to lift the unit into place. Empty weight boxes will be in a suspended position ready for hookup. A mark should be supplied on the tower frame by the factory showing where the top weight box should be brought to. If there is no mark from the factory, then make a mark using the following procedure. This mark will later be the correct height of the top weight box for when the door is closed. The correct height of that mark is equal to half the height of the door plus one inch, measured from the top of the top weight box in a collapsed position. Measure this distance now and make a mark on the tower. The tower topped to which the eye bolts at the very top of the tower are attached 
is suitable for lifting the tower if using a block and tackle or other suitable lifting device. Remove the block and tackle at this point. You will need it a little later for lifting the empty weight boxes. Now hook the block and tackle through the weight box pulley. Clamp the cable and raise the empty boxes into the extended position to the mark. Use the block and tackle. Clamp the weight box to the tower, thereby suspending the empty weight boxes until the cables are hooked up. Position the cables over their respective pulleys at the top of the tracks. Using cable clamps, fasten the cables snugly to the eye bolts at the top of the tower. The short cable stays closest to the wall with 10-inch pulleys, and the long cable stays closest to the wall if 6-inch diameter pulleys are supplied. The top of the top empty weight box should be at the correct height. It is important for the proper weight adjustment in each weight box. If necessary, refer back for directions. Use two cable clamps on each cable at the eye bolt for larger doors. Tighten the 3 quarter inch nuts on the weight side cable eye bolt that is the closest to the wall until there is enough thread for both nuts and lock washer on the eye bolt. Repeat on the long cable furthest from the wall, but leave half an inch of thread showing after both nuts and lock washer have been threaded on. Having connected the cables to the eye bolts, remove any bolts or fastening devices used to hang the weight boxes. Ballast plates can now be added to the counterweight boxes. The appropriate number of plates per box will be noted on the shop drawing or parts list provided. For vertical or high lift doors, see supplement instructions with product hardware. Having filled the weight boxes, open the door carefully. Important: Make sure that the rollers on each panel stay in the tracks. Don't risk having the rollers come out and the door fall. Attach all the horizontal and diagonal track supports to the horizontal track. Space the center support evenly between the wall and the end support. Now adjust the supports at the ends of the track, so as to create an even space between each track and the open panels. Attach the supports to the ceiling. In order for the door to function properly, it is critical to adjust the weight of each panel with the corresponding weight box by applying the following procedure. First, find the timing mark at the first bolt, nearest to the header, holding the horizontal track support to the horizontal track, at the point where that track begins to curve downward. Now, lower the door from the open position until the bottom roller is approximately 12 inches below the header. To determine whether there are enough weights in the top weight box to balance the door. If necessary, add or remove weights to this box so that the door is balanced. Next, pull the door down further until the roller between the first and second panel is at the timing mark, and the chain suspending the weights of the second weight box is fully extended with the spring already under tension. Note, as the second roller begins to move past the timing mark down along the curve of the track, the spring of the first weight box must be under tension. The chain may have to be adjusted accordingly by removing the bolt and shortening or lengthening the chain as needed. Important When adjusting the chain lengths, clamp the weight box with a vice grip or a clamp to ensure that the door does not move from this position. Failure to secure the door may cause injury to the installers or damage to the system as the door falls without its counterweights. Do not cut the chain until the correct link is determined. When the correct link is selected, the door will travel smoothly through the curve, both in opening and in closing. Now, add or remove weights to the second box to ensure that the door is balanced. The correct balance should see the door have a tendency to creep upward. Repeat the adjustments and balance as each roller reaches the timing mark. Run the door several times, checking that all the adjustments are correct and all the bolts and nuts are secure. If you find that the panels are no longer level, you can adjust them with the eye bolts. Adjust the panels with the door open and the weights down. At this point, lubricate the inside corner angles of the weight tower with an approved lubricant. Now, attach the weight box covers starting at the bottom. With the door in the full open position, place the supplied bumpers against the top section and fasten to the horizontal tracks. Electrically operated doors are controlled by a side mount operator and will require external open and close limit switches to be installed. 
Bumpers are installed after final operational adjustments to the door have been made. The Hanover lift system will provide years of trouble-free operation when installed correctly. Should you have any questions, please phone Hanover Lift Systems, a division of Hanover Door Systems at 1-800-667-3667.